Hello and welcome to a 3D tracking and integration tutorial. We'll be working with Maya, Maya Live, and compositing in After Effects for this piece. This project is designed for you to be playing along, so if you download the files off either in the more info on the right or from my site at uni3d.com, you'll have the background footage as well as this spider and with and without animations that you can work with the exact same footage here. So we'll go ahead and get started. First, make sure you have Maya Live loaded. To double check that, go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, and check the Plugin Manager. Make sure Maya Live is on. Once that's set, go to the Maya Live tool set up here, and to start it out, start with Scene, New Match Move. And this will create a new scene with a camera and a roto, which is similar to an image plane, but for Maya Live. Before we start loading in any footage, we'll set our project so that way everything's linked up properly. So hunt down the, wait, wrong folder, hunt down the spider track. Once you have that loaded in, go to the full res image and browse, and in the source images, you'll see BG plate, and then this is our background. Load that up, and we can see here, that's our footage, everything's loaded in nicely. Only other thing we need to do before we finish this window is copy it to render settings, and then go and check this real quick just to make sure everything took. And it did indeed change out the width to make it a widescreen to match this video. And we'll also change the renderable camera to shot camera one, just so we don't forget later on. And I like to keep things saved as I'm running along, so I'll save this off now. And that's all we need to do for setup. Now we can move along to track. This little green button right here is about the only thing you really need to worry about in this whole window. It's the uh, track point button and when you hold middle mouse down in the window it'll drag one around as soon as you release the mouse this point centered camera in the top right will zoom in close so that either using middle or left mouse you can drag around the search area or the target area here as well as the search area outside so we'll set this just around this little tracking marker here and before we start tracking we'll take a look at a few options down here at tracking direction, it's set to forward by default, which when you're starting at frame one is fine, but later on we may be grabbing things from any point along the timeline, so we'll set it to bi-directional. Stop tracking on better frame is typically the ideal, I don't think I'd ever want to change that. And this is all just information on the point, nothing we need to worry about there. Under options, by default pretty much all of these work you know, ideally for most situations. About the only two I ever have to mess with too much is if there's a lot of motion blur, I may have to increase the blur radius. And if the camera does a large or wide motion so that this marker would rotate more than say 35, 40 degrees or so, you may have to put incremental or smart update so it'll re-update this target with what's inside of it at the time. The one thing I do always change though is I turn off make movie since what that'll do is make a, f a little, uh, movie file every time you track out of that. So that's all we need. We'll go ahead and say start track. Now my Alive will run along showing this progress window and once it's done we'll have a nice little line showing its track throughout the scene. If we scrub back and forth here we can see that it does hold nice and tight. It doesn't slip around, things aren't moving all over the place. That's a good track. So we'll keep going and doing more tracks, especially on these four tracking markers I set up. And really all you're looking for throughout this whole process is anything with high contrast. If it looks like some detail that could be picked up easily and is very steady, that's a good thing. Things you want to avoid are things that might be moving around, such as any of these flowers here all end up doing a small shift with a bit of wind, as well as the shadows of the flowers are then just as bad. About the only other thing you really need to look for is to try to grab points across a wide range of motion. That way you have things that are close to the camera like these leaves, as well as things that are further back from the camera like the door corner. Because what Maya Live's solver is really going to be looking for is parallax. Ah, here we can see it starts to shift a little bit over to the side as the camera bumps it off the edge of the frame. So from right here, what we'll do is zoom in on this window and cut out some bad parts of data. What this here shows us is Maya's confidence in its track and clearly it dropped off quick. So to get rid of this data, we'll just drag a selection over it, creates this little box, hold down the right mouse and say delete region. That way it won't have that bad data which will be a lot worse for Maya. 
and there's no real point in watching me copy a bunch of different points, so I'll just pause it for a few moments and come back once I've got them all laid out. Alright, so that's enough points for now. I ended up with 20 points, and here's how I laid those out. Got most of them across this plane here, a couple on the wall over here, a couple on the ground along here where it'll be hopping down, and I made sure to put one on this rock since we'll have to put a stand in for that later as it will catch a shadow. And that should about do it. So go ahead, save that off, and move on to solving then. Alright, so here what we're going to do uh, before anything else is we'll set up some survey points since I do have uh, some data as well as since we can see visually the kind of things that these points will need to be constrained to. So the kind of constraints we'll be using will be point and plane. The first one we'll make is the plane one, so make this view a little larger and grab all the points that are flat on this porch. No, nope, you don't count. These ones do. This one in the corner. Sometimes you end up grabbing your roto. May have to change that off by switching to the wireframe. And I think that's everything that's flat. Yep. Alright, so I'll create a plane point and call this porch plane. Alright. I'll switch that over to registration only which means that it will not actually try to force everything onto a plane. It'll only flatten everything onto the plane once it's already done its solve and it's aligning the scene. This often helps to make the solver's job a little easier since it'll be able to pretty much tell these are on a plane once it tell senses the parallax. The next thing I'll create is I'll grab this front left tracking marker and create a point constraint and call this one origin point because I want this to be at zero 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 so that's exactly as it should be. Then I'll grab this one to the right and call this I guess just front right point. And I do have a touch of survey data. This thing was about 18 inches away and for the sake of I, ju I don't want it to be 18 so I'll just declare that 2 inches is 1 Maya unit and I want it to be facing on the X. So I'll go ahead and say that it is 9 units away on the X. And now I'll actually go ahead and move this camera, the shot camera, just go ahead and move it back a little bit and slightly position it more into the place where it'll start. I don't know if it makes the largest of a difference, but it is even mentioned in the Maya help that it can assist it, so... Plus, I just kind of like to see it so visually I have a better idea of what's going on here. So we got our origin point, got our front right point, and then that's the plane. Works out fine enough for me. So everything is set to registration only, everything's active, We'll go ahead. I personally like to double this up to 14. I find you get a touch better of a solve, though going beyond that tends to somewhat reduce it as well as slow it down. So then we'll hit solve and let it run on through this. And what it's basically doing is just going through these steps automatically, where it'll go through 14 keyframes and try to find a solution that satisfies it using a perspective camera. Then it'll refine that constantly until it gets a nice clear result, apply that result to every frame, and then go through registration where it snaps it all onto these survey data and the other points. So I don't want this grid, it's all in the way. I'll turn that off and now we'll scrub back and forth and it looks like that came out pretty nice. Its pixel slip is below one so it shouldn't be anything that we'd ever notice since I guess really you can't see too well below one pixel, that's pretty much the limit of the data. So that looks nice. Go ahead and save that again. And that pretty much kills it for this little YouTube video. I'll start up in part two with setting up the scene.